we're in the car here. Erin is got a little bit of that cold that I had before. It was really kind and I shared it with him. Thank you. <laughs> and that's just how nice I am. So hopefully he'll be feeling better soon, but we're gonna make some butternut squash soup because soup is delicious when you are sick. As I see sunshine come through my window, feel the guys as promised I'm gonna show you how to make butternut squash soup it is one of my favorite soups it is totally delicious also nutritious and super easy to make so here is the recipe right here you can either use vegetable broth or chicken stock depending if you want to make it vegan or not uh, coconut milk butternut squash granny smith apples uh, Walla Walla sweet onion, some carrots, some garlic, salt and pepper, and of course delicious curry. All that thrown into the crock pot for some easy peasy dinner. Hi, I'm gonna start my uh, butternut squash soup by adding some vegetable broth. I am using vegetable broth today because I'd like to make it vegetarian. Actually, it's vegan and gluten-free. How awesome is that, right? An easy, delicious meal that covers all sorts of diets. So I'm gonna start with two cups of the vegetable broth. Of course, you can use chicken stock if you want, if you're not concerned about making it um, vegetarian or vegan. So we'll start with this, two cups. So next I am going to put in a full can of coconut milk. Um, this one happened, this can happens to be 13.5 fluid ounces of coconut milk, which I think is truly delicious. So here we go, a full can of coconut milk going in the crock pot. Mm. This will help make it nice and creamy and rich while still keeping it vegan or vegetarian and gluten-free. <laughs> mm, I love coconut milk, <laughs> it's so good. So the next thing I'm gonna add is the butternut squash. I have gone the totally lazy girl route where I've bought it, it's already diced for me. This is 24 ounces of pre-cut butternut squash. I can see this chunk size here. Since we're gonna throw it in the crock pot, it is um, totally fine to be about one inch squares because um, it's gonna get all soft and mushy in the crock pot. So let's add that in. So some people are surprised to find out that I put Granny Smith apples in here. It's kind of like a secret surprise. It makes it super delicious. Adds a little sweetness, a little tartness. It's all good. So I am going to core and peel these and then just keep them up and put them in the crock pot. <laughs> And the treat, you get the skins. Mmm, so good. So I'm gonna add these apples now. Um, normally I add like one medium apple, but the apples were, were really small, so I have gone wild. I'm adding two small apples. We'll see how it turns out. Maybe I'm just being totally wild and crazy here. We'll see how it goes. I'm feeling fairly confident though that it's still going to be super delicious. I'm not really worried. <laughs> so I usually put in one medium carrot. So I peel that carrot and then um, slice it up. Uh, in this case, Erin was wanting some little baby carrots for something else. And so I am just using a couple of those baby carrots. So I have some baby carrots, roughly the amount of one medium carrot, and I'm going to add that in. So next we have
have the onion. Uh, Walla Walla sweets are what I use for this because there is no better onion in the world. Walla Walla sweets are so fabulous, so delicious. I don't really see why anyone would bother to use any other sort of onion. Huh. So even just that little bit of cutting kind of got uh, of the onions <laughs> kind of got me teary eyed, but not so bad that I can't continue to work. Uh, I know that this happens because when you cut onions, they release a gas and that gas is irritating to the eyes and my eyes are particularly sensitive. So um, I'm gonna just quickly give these guys a bit of a stir so they are under the liquid here. So there, there, there I go. <laughs> so hopefully I won't be so bothered by them. All right, so those are all like the main ingredients. Now it's time for the seasoning. Uh, I'm gonna start by adding some garlic. Uh, I happen to have in the fridge this um, already like finely chopped organic garlic because I earlier made some cheesy garlic fries and I needed this for that. So I'm just gonna use this. Uh, you could put um, one small head or like three cloves of garlic cut up in here as well. I am going to just put in though that and uh, that, that much uh, garlic. <laughs> really, you can never have too much garlic, although I know my dad will disagree because of a minor garlic accident that I had way back when I was still a kid and cooking dinner, so for the fam. Uh, but really, in my opinion, you can't have too much garlic. So that is the garlic. Uh, next, a little salt and pepper to taste. Put some in. That's the salt side. Let's get the pepper going. My husband always says more pepper, the better. So i to put a lot of pepper in here. It's a big crock pot. All right, and then my favorite, curry powder. Uh, whenever you add coconut milk to anything, you really should be able to add curry powder to it. That's the, you know, fabulous combination of the two. And again, I'm not really one for measuring. I maybe should be, but I'm not. So I'm going to put in, uh, I don't know. I opened up the side that is just to shake it out and meant to open up the side that is to just dump it out. There we go. So about that much curry. Really do it to taste. I love curry. curry. So I am gonna have a lot of curry in my soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir it up. And then here is the great thing about crock pot meals. I'm gonna plug this in, I'm gonna turn it on high, and then I'm gonna go out and have a great day. I think I'm gonna go out and do some hiking. So if I do, I will take you along. Um, and then when you come back in the evening, dinner will be ready. There's actually one more step with this, but I'll show you when I get back in the evening after it's been cooking and simmering and all those delicious tastes have been like mixing and mingling together. All right, see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, well, good morning. good morning. So while the soup is in the crock pot, it's an excellent time to get out and go enjoy the outdoors. So there's this great little nature conservancy here in the northern tip of the Kitsap Peninsula called the Foul Weather Bluff Nature Conservancy. And so we're gonna share that with you. Come along. So of course you can drive here, but many people bike and here is our local lock up for the bikes. And as you can see, someone made it into a little heart. How cute is that? Well, because this is a nature preserve, they do have some kind of strict guidelines that are important to follow. So no dogs or other pets because this is home to a lot of animals here. Um, no bicycles or motorized vehicle actually on the preserve. It, because it's a preserve and not a park, no camping, uh, no fires, no hunting, no fireworks. Obviously, removing your litter, pack it in, pack it out. 
And this is one that is sometimes hard. No collection of any kind, including shells, driftwood, clamming, all that good stuff. Because again, it is a nature preserve, a haven for wildlife. <laughs> So this is a cool nature preserve because it is a good mix of woodland, forested area, going under that branch, uh, a really cool marsh and beach as well, coastal beach. And uh, it's a really nice walk, although it is a reasonable walk, so it's got um, access for most people. And uh, the walk the forested part is through a second grove, uh, grove mostly western red cedar, also western hemlock, some dug fir, alders, that sort of stuff. guy in there, a little spike here, here looking at us. He says, no thank you, not interested in sharing the nature preserve with you today. <laughs> here we are, we're exiting the wooded portion or the forested portion of our walk. And we're coming out to the beach. Ah, beautiful. Oh, deer tracks. Probably of that guy we just saw. Ah, and here we are, we've made it to the beach. We've got this nice bluff here. All the signs saying stay off the bluff. You don't want it to erode more than it already is, of course, through those natural processes. And out here at this beautiful beach. Here is one of those undercuts that happen so often in uh, bluff situations, especially on the water, where the bottom part of the bluff gets eroded and the root structure holds the top part and then you end up with all of these big trees here really hanging out over nothing with no support and so they eventually end up falling into the water. Another great aspect of this preserve is this great brackish marshland. We see all sorts of cool stuff here. We often see river otters. They're super adorable running around. Here's some deer tracks to prove that the deer also like to hang out at the beach. Deer will lead us back to the forest. Well, our time here is done. It's been super relaxing. Aaron's heading on back towards the trail, back into the woods. fabulous hike at the Foulweather Bluff Nature Preserve 
and the soup has been cooking and bubbling and boiling here. This is what it looks like right now. What I'm going to do now is take it from here and I am going to transfer it to the blender and I'm going to puree it all up so it's creamy and smooth and consistent. It's going to be so delicious. When you are done with uh, the blending part, it looks like this. All right, butternut squash soup ready for the family, ready for a delicious dinner. As the season.